Hi, I'm Peggy Farron. Welcome to the Understand Photography Show where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Stay tuned because we have fine art photographer Parrish Kohanan coming right up. But first I want to let you know that we do this show, generally we're live on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash understand photography, 4 p.m. Eastern time on Fridays. But if you miss the live show, you can watch the recording on YouTube or you can listen um, as a podcast on iTunes. So if you're like me and you like to listen to podcasts in the car, find us on, uh, on iTunes and listen to us. It's the Understand Photography Show. Um, we have some trips coming up, so please check our, our schedule, understandphotography.com. And we also have some classes online, okay? We have two different types of classes. Our signature class is called the Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography, and that's going to give you a solid foundation in photography. And we, I actually teach that as a live class. So we have start dates. You just check our website, understandphotography.com for the website, or for the start times. But you're going to learn to shoot in manual. You're going to learn proper composition. Yes, it's OK to break the rules, but you've got to know what they are first, right? going to learn a little bit about lighting, including flash photography, and then our last class is on the techie stuff. So that actually is a live class. You have homework. You get critiqued. It's a really, really, it's going to give you a good, so solid foundation. Our other classes are online. Our video classes and our software classes, you'll like the, the format. They're two or three or four minute videos with just a tiny little segment of something to learn so that you can learn that little bit and then move on to the next section. And it's easier to go back if you forgot how to do fine tuning and selection in Photoshop. You can just watch that little two minute video instead of going through a whole video course trying to find it. So that's everything's on understandphotography.com. So hopefully you like our classes. So today my guest is Canon Explorer of Light, Parrish Kohanam. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. And you're here in Southwest Florida for the Florida Camera Club That's right. Council Conference. That's right. That's right. And I heard you talk about your four-week proficiency course. I want to take it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need it. <laughs> uh, but it's surprising how, how many people do get by without really understanding the, the you know, the basics of photography. That's true, but especially the, nowadays. The you know, everything is so, automated, yeah. yeah. And they're so sophisticated now that right. you can get away with it, right. but not all the time. <laughs> well, I think there's some very important components missing from that. You I know, do so, too. So, yeah, because I, I think too. there's, you know, you have to pay your price. You have to go through, be passionate about what you do and learn. I mean, I've been doing this for over 40 years and I'm still learning. 40 and, years? Are you that and old? I still, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I, and I think my passion has become amplified as I shoot more and I've discovered new things. But photography is about discovery, isn't it? And, yeah. and actually going to uncharted territories that you've never been before, you challenge yourself, you know? So I think that's what's beautiful about it. That, you know, I'm, I'm sure you do the same thing, constantly raising the bar for yourself, you know, to want to see what's up there in the next level. It's curiosity. I think creativity is about curiosity. Fundamentally, yeah, you know. and then the next one is exploration. Then, then everything, the magic happens after that. You know. Now you yeah. are extremely creative, but you're also extremely technical, right? Am I right there? I think you know. I know technical. I don't emphasize on technique so much, although I, I understand them. I know them well. That's what I meant. But I think techniques. When when you see a photograph, uh, let me go back years ago when. I used to get this large format uh, magazine out of Germany. It was printed on glossy paper. It was fabulous. Every photograph was beautiful, but it was lacking that soul. Technically, it was beautiful. Everything, you know, the lighting ratios, everything was perfect. But I think we all have our own vision, our, our own voice to, ex to really transmute through our images. And that magazine, I mean, after a while I stopped using it. I said, like, yeah, you know, it's beautiful, but it just was lacking that real essence that makes photography special. Okay. Yeah. And what, so, so what do you mean Going back that, to like me, uh, I, I know enough techniques that I don't have to think about them too much, you know, and I don't want to get bogged down about it. So I know it like the back of my hand almost, you know. Well, and of course, there's always new ones coming up and you're constantly learning, which is good, you know. But I only use techniques to enhance what I'm doing as a okay. creative photographer and not as a means to 
you know, so techniques. I mean, you see, again, you see a, an image that has been photoshopped, and you can tell right away what filters, what, well, plug that, that's what plugins has been used. And that <coughs> really is destroyed. It's, it's really lost its purpose. It's you know, funny so that you say that, because mm -hmm. for me, I look at your work, and I can't figure it out. Yeah. I can't. How did he do that? Yeah. That's so cool. Well, thank you. And well. Most people, I can figure, most photographs, I can look at it, and I can figure out how they lit it. I can figure out what sure. Photoshop techniques they used. Right. I can figure it out. I can't figure it out on you know, yours. I, I'm not a follower, you know, I've never, you know, like sadly the social media is teaching all of us, including the younger generation, to follow. Because you go Facebook, you're following this, following that. Mm. So I've always, you know, like I've, I've been in this business for many years and, you know, did, in the beginning of my career I was doing commercial photography in San Francisco and then New York and Atlanta. And one of the things that I would see, this, these incredible techniques would come in this, this uh, the trends, one of them was light painting with Aaron Jones. I, I mean, this is probably, you don't, this is before your time probably. So what it was, it was a fiber optic unit that he was painting. And partial, part of the exposure was a long exposure, and part of the exposure he would, he would use the diffusion, and it looked like a painting. And I, for the life of me, nobody could figure it out. I was like, how in the world did he do it? Part of the image is, is sharp, part of it is soft. Wow. And then people started finding out. You know. So, and that was such an ephemeral, trend that it went away. So I don't follow trends because they're so short-lived. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I stay with what my inner voice tells me and I follow that. I think if you trust your inner voice, your, your, your passion, uh, and it's another thing that I never focused on, you know, I never chased after money. You know, no. like, you know, yeah, we all have, you know, love to have a comfortable life and all that, but I, I would never say, okay, I'm going to do this shot for myself. I'm going to make X amount of dollars. I'm going to do this because I'm going to get, that's why I'm not on social media much, because there's so much noise for me that it just is not the kind, right kind of environment I want to be in. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I watch a lot of the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a technophobe, I embrace technology. Yeah, well, that's what I meant when I said technical. I didn't mean technically yeah. as far as, I meant, like, you're good at technology. Well, you know, I, I think it's a part of getting to the way you want to be. Like I, yeah. You know, I started in the career when I was shooting film. You know, yeah. I started my career shooting. So I had all, you know, this is, this is uh, interesting. So in my portfolio in San Francisco, all I had was model shots, portraits, and all that. So I went to the ad advertising agency, the art directors uh, would see it. And they said, they give me a job for still life shoot. And I, you know, I'd, I'd been playing with still life because I wanted to learn the fundamentals of lighting because, right. and composition then that helped me, you know, cross over to that field of shooting people and so on. So I started, I bought a four by five camera because, you know, these shots are going to be used for billboards. You needed a large format camera. Okay. And I, I knew nothing about that camera. Oh my so gosh. So I, I started reading, reading. And those days there was no YouTube videos I and know. nothing, you know. I'm jealous. I wish so, I would have learned when there were YouTube videos. <laughs> well, so, you know, I, you just read books and you just do them. You know, you just do it. You just do it. And, do it until you get and it. And then until you get it, you know. That, uh, and you understand the fundamentals of all the tilts and everything. And so at the time that I started shooting film, in order for your work to be noticed, you had to be inventive. You had to be creative with the camera. Uh, you know. So there was not Photoshop to help you. you right. know, so you did everything on the set. If you were shooting a CEO of a company, you made sure you had a good makeup artist with you. And you did the lighting right. You spent the time with your assistant, set up the lighting, so on. So you don't waste his time. Um, so that discipline has stayed with me even now. Okay. You know, with digital cameras, although I know I can Photoshop things, I never ever say, well, I can fix it in Photoshop. I try to do everything at the time I'm shooting. You know, so uh, I think it's, mm -hmm. I'm thankful that I went through that analog period because it taught me a discipline that was very valuable. So I'm not, you know, some of the things I, you know, that people say, well, is this all digital? I said, well, yeah, it's shot digitally. But the concept and when the execution was analog. All right, of it, you know, right. So I stay an extra hour, extra four hours, if I have to, to make that shot right at the camera so I don't have to spend unnecessary time sitting, for retouching in and Photoshop. Right, because you, you want to do the cool artistic effects. You don't want to yeah. waste time fixing, like bringing out the shadows. That's or, true. For well, me, part of it, I mean, it's a part of the process, but I don't want to rely on that 
to save my shots. Right. I want to do as much as I can capable of doing it when I'm shooting. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, but you know what? I missed my whole introduction to you. I'm about sorry. You. <laughs> okay. so, uh, that's why I kind of evaded your question, I guess. <laughs> I just want, because I know who you are, but yeah. just in case some of our viewers or audience is not sure, Parrish, um, I mentioned already that you're a Canon Explorer of Light. Mm -hmm. That is a huge honor. Mm -hmm. I mean, Canon, I think, has 50 total. 50, yeah. So there's not many people who have earned that honor. I don't know what you would call that honor, I it guess. It is an it's honor. Just the, I, I, the big I consider it an honor. Yeah. I because mean, I'm am amongst that, some of the most leading worldwide photographers. It's just really incredible. It's like, well, wow, you're yeah. one of them, that's for well, sure. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you started your career as a commercial photographer for right. advertising agencies and things like that. But now you focus on fine art right. more than anything. Am I right? And fine art was always my love. You okay. know, and I was on the side of uh, commercial assignments. I would do my own projects, you know, and then I built this collection. I said, well, what am I going to do with it? I said, well, yeah, we, we would make the transition to a different field, you know. So, I mean, I, I love photography of, of any kind, you know. I really enjoy photography. I, I look at, you know, a lot of websites incessantly, photography website, photographers, okay. and so on, uh, because it makes you think, uh, what was he thinking when he was doing that? I think, you know, this is, we all have, as I said, we have our own dialogue uh, to create a, a shot that mm -hmm. has a message. So you just like to see what other people's dialogues are, and it's uh, fascinating, you know, so the now interpretation. How, how did you get recognized by Canon to become a, an explorer of well, light? That's a big, big deal. Well, I remember I was, uh, earlier I mentioned that I never chased after money. Uh -huh. I think, you know, if you follow your passion and your heart, I think good things happen. You know, so I was doing commercial photography, and, uh, you know, some of my fine art was surfacing. And so I get a call at 6.30 in, in the evening, 24 years ago. Wow, that was a long time ago. And I said, Parrish, I'm so and so from Canon USA Corporation. They asked me what kind of cameras I use. And I said, well, that, that was an analog, analog cameras. Right. And so I was doing four by five medium format. I said, no, 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 what kind of cameras? Medium, uh, 35. I said, Nikon which I barely oh. ever used, you know, because you were using when you do commercial, yeah. you have to enlargements, you couldn't use it because right. of the film quality and optics. So he said, how would you like to use Canon? And I said, why? So two days later, FedEx comes with these boxes of film, you know, boxes and boxes of cameras oh and gosh. lenses. And then, I, you know, at first I, I thought, you know, yeah, right. You know, I didn't believe him. And then he followed up the call and he said, these are the guys who are going to be on the team with you. Like worldwide photographers, Albert Watson, Sarah Moon, I mean, from France. I mean, the people, just great, great people that are coming. And I said, wow, this is really incredible. And, you know, the Canada has been an incredible company. Um, this is not an infomercial or anything like that. It's been very supportive. And what they do with the explorers, they send them out to share their knowledge and experience with everybody, not to sell anything. And I think this is really that's what sets them apart. It's a great company. Okay. They've taken good care of us and they've sent us to a lot of great venues. We've met some really am amazing people like you and Aww. that joke. Um, so I'm honored to be a part that's of that. That's awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. That is so, that's a great story. Yeah. Okay, so now as you started changing your career into fine art photography, I mean, what were some of the steps you took? You said you were already kind of dabbling always in the fine art stuff, yeah. but to become to make that your business is a whole different world than yeah. taking commercial yeah. photography, right? Right, right. So how did you kind of... Well, I like to dive into... What were some of the... Do you remember even? Because it's been a long not time, really. I, know. I think, you know, you know, I think, you again, your intuition and your inner voice tells you that it's time. You know, okay. it's like, I like to take a lot of chances. When I was 18 years old, I came to this country. I hardly ever spoke English. That's I didn't awesome. know anybody. But you know, at that time, I, d I wasn't thinking that I was taking a chance. You know, I was just here. There was an inner voice. There was a very strong, positive message that led me here, and I love being here. So, and I think if I treat that philosophy in my life throughout. So when I had enough images in fine art, I said, "Well, this is maybe this is the time to move in." Because I think our photography, as you know, has changed a lot. You know, the mm -hmm. social media has changed quite a bit. But I said, "Well, why don't I focus on something that I really love?" And it's really all from my, my, my intuition, my, from my vision. Uh -huh. You know, when you work with art directors, designers, and, and corporate uh, directly, you're doing their layouts, which is fine. And I 
give them 150 percent of my my ability to make it look good. But then again, it's not mine. You know, it's, it's their like, vision, you know, not it's their your vision, vision right. right? So that, on that basis, I said, well, it's time for me to go to the next level and see, explore that. And I'm, I'm exploring that well, now. Well, so did yeah. you have a big break on like selling your first art piece or? No, not really. None. It was just a slow, slow and steady climb. It was, <laughs> it, was it was very, you know, uh, what the Jeff Bezos said that uh, a, a success story is a 10 year period, you know, it's like, yeah, no, so, so, so. So nothing is quick. I think despite what, you know, the, the false mes message, especially on YouTube and social media, it's like, okay, you do this and you become a professional photographer and take our courses, you know. But look at these master classes that, you know, that are taught by Annie Libovitz, by, uh, uh, who that? that's master, uh, Gordon Ramsay and all this. Yeah, I know, like, I've seen know, those well, commercials. Take, take our courses and you become pros. And, I wish it was that easy. Yeah. You know, I think you yeah. have to really pay the price. I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, I love what I did. I, I, you know, when I'm doing my photography, I don't even notice time. I don't, time is of no essence. I just, it's a journey that I just go. With. The best part, and I'll talk about this in my lecture, uh, that this noise stops. You know, the duality in your brain, you know, since we wake up in the morning, we have this constant dialogue that is going on about a lot of unessential things. But I'm f photographing, that's gone, because my focus is only on that photograph. If I'm sure photographing a flower, this is... That's where you are. That's where I am. You, you shut know, the I'm rest one. of the world out. Sorry? And you can shut the rest of the world out. I think it's a great meditation technique. You know, I don't do it consciously when I say this is meditative, but right. this is the process. I think it's really an honor to have the privilege to have that, you know, to, when you get into it. But you do, to me, you seem like you have a pretty intense personality that you can focus. Not at all. No? No, no I'm, I'm pretty easy going, but I'm, I am very hard on myself, I agree. You know, but if I'm not happy with the shot, the world would never ever see it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's like, you know, it's, it's really about, it's not self-gratification or anything like that. I think it's, it's a sense of fulfillment that you get of something doing that's, that's, that really resonates with you. Yeah. And if it's not resonating with me 100%, there's no need to be seen, you know, I just trash it. Yeah. Would you consider yourself a perfectionist? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe I that's think. where I was, maybe that's the feeling well, I was that, getting you know. of you more so than the intense. Well, <laughs> you know what? I think uh, perfectionist uh, has got a stigma attached to it, sadly, you know. Oh, um, well, yeah, because some things perfectionists never get anything done. Well, you okay, get things you, done. Well, if you're, <laughs> if you're over, over perfectionist, you know, but I think if you really carry, carry about or care about the quality of that, then you, the, your vision of what you're seeing, you want to get to that destination. And regardless of how much time it takes or what it takes, you do it. You do it. And that's perfectionism, you know that. Okay, <laughs> so now, right now, do you have a name for this series that you, you're doing with the women with the... It's called Reflections. Reflections. Yeah. That is so cool. Thank I can't you. even get over how cool that Thank is. You. Thank you. That's so is that done in Photoshop? Some of it. Because but a lot of it is done, again, you know, at the, at the time I'm shooting it. Yeah. Because I can't create things that doesn't exist because my brain doesn't function that way. You know, well, it's like I said, well, I can do it in Photoshop, but I don't know where to start with Photoshop. So you know, I have to have the basic fundamental part of that shot in there. And Which if would I be the enhance, portrait I, of the woman? Mm-hmm. So you so, have, like, you have one lady, she's got her arms kind of like, I don't know, her elbows up and her mm, head close to her mm, arms. Mm. So you pose, you light, you use all studio lighting, I'm assuming. Right, right, all that. And you have a vision for that as you're taking it, though, as the finished product? Or do you take the portrait, pull it into Photoshop, and start trying to think about what you can well, do with good, it? Good question. I, I, I have a vision for it, and I, I know where I want to go with it. But what's beautiful about it, their detours happen. Okay. You know, discoveries happen. And, you know, I love these two words, what if. Uh -huh. And I say, okay, what if we did it this way? You know, so, okay, well, I, I, I like this idea. This is the way I thought about it. But what if I just deviate a little bit and try to do it differently? And then you find the different other pathways to get there and new discoveries and surprises. So most of it, I would say a good 80 to 85% of it is on camera and the rest of it is on Photoshop. And if when you're to. when you're taking, let's say when you're taking the pictures, okay, you're you have a vision, but you're trying. Are you trying several different poses and different lighting schemes? And I think I tried to get the lighting 
constant, so that's one variable that you know I, I you get don't there have to worry about. because I've done yeah, lighting for so many years. I, I know where I want to go with yeah. it. And then the pose, you explore, you you try a diff few different things, and again, I don't obs obsess over it. I don't get excessively involved in posing. You know, if something starts working, then I try to just make it better. And you, know, you so. use professional models. Always, most of the time. Most and of the time. a lot of times I use amateurs too. Really? You know? Yeah. I mean, for these reflection series, you know, they, they really don't need any professional uh, skills. And so I use them. Well, do you think you're good at posing though? Because a lot of amateurs can't pose and yeah. you spend all this time, no, move your elbow a little bit this way. And then they move it five inches mm -hmm. and you're like, no, move it three and a half inches back down. And they move it 10 inches. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I really admire some of the directors who pick up some person who's got an interesting face from the crowd and they direct them. And that's a real skill. It Posting is a skill. Is and skilling. I think, uh, you know, in the beginning it was hard for me, but I've done it so much that I, it's I think it's easy. become, I think the dialogue becomes a lot easier and I, I love people. I love to connect with them. So that's the key to getting what you want, I think, you know, so uh, if you're close and you're uptight or you're nervous about, the, well, I don't know about this thing. So know all, everything that you need to know technically to get to a point that the more important parts to work on that creative aspects of it and more importantly to communicate with a person like you photographing. If you're doing a por portrait of it, if I'm photographing you, I want to get to know you. I want to know, you know, that enough about you that I have a dialogue going with you and I want to have this eye contact with you, which now with our iPhones, we, we don't have that. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> the eye contact is so important. And I, I look at people in the eye, I talk to them, I'm interested in what they're saying. And, you know, when I shoot, Sometimes celebrities, I go and do a background check on them and see what their interests are. Ah. So you have some sort of dialogue, and I think that breaks the ice. You know, so we human beings, we we'll, we'll like to be social and we like to talk. So you know, and especially if you see somebody taking interest in you, so you perk up and you, know, you talk. So, so that's the part of the thing that you know I use the techniques that I use to get people at ease. You know, okay. and I mean if they're six years old or s seven years old. Okay. You know, that's, that's what I use, yeah. <laughs> now, how, okay, so let's just talk about this latest series, your reflection series, because mm. it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, how did, how did you come up with that? Was that like an inspiration that you saw something and you said, oh, I like that, but maybe if I did this to it, I could make that even better, or? Great question. You know, I, uh, this is a progression of one idea I did uh, I'll send you those shots with the, with, the, with the model that photographed. She had a stripe outfit with the stripe, you know, backgrounds and all that. Oh, okay, okay. And that kind of evolved into that. And you know, oh. and I said, okay, so, uh, and the inspiration came from one of the shots that I'll send you too. It came from my assistant. We were outside, you know, my old studio, uh, which I had a garden back there. I would go and water every morning, and then so I saw this flower pot, and there was this metal chair with the grid patterns in it. And the sun was lighting it, and it was under flower. And I said, wow, this is a great pattern. So that same chair, we took it inside. I put a spotlight through it and I shot a model with it. Oh, so, my gosh. So this is a kind of inspiration. There's things that, you know, they're out there. You know, there's so much creativity and beauty out there. All we need to is open our eyes and be open. Okay, wow. so what if I use it in the, inside the studio to shoot a model with it? I mean, I love the flower, but the flower has its own beauty. You don't need to put any patterns on it. So that's how this evolved. You know, it was like a incremental steps from that very first shot to what it is now. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. I, and I you guess. have a new studio, or you call it a gallery. I'm sorry, it's, it is yeah. a gallery, right? It's a studio and gallery. It's both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, so you came to my old one. I went right? to your old one. I saw that well, little garden in the back. You need to visit and <laughs> come and see the new one. Yeah, so. In fact, I scraped my car. <laughs> oh, God, You know how I'm narrow sorry, that little thing is? Yeah, you were, I think, one of the first ones. So that building is no longer there, you know. So yeah. you know, it was a very tight drive Parking, in there yes yeah, yeah and i was just not paying mm. enough attention <laughs> uh, you know I, I believe i was there for almost 30 years and not many people had that kind of accident so okay yeah. what's up well no no i'm not <laughs> reflecting on your driving but you know you know it happens i mean you know if you oh, you, know, you, you could can't get, get out of you it you can get parish. distracted <laughs> 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 Well, so I think I inserted my foot in my mouth. No, I didn't mean to. Yeah. <laughs> so now your, um, your gallery is in Atlanta, mm -hmm. right in the city proper of Atlanta. It is. It's closer to my home, which is great. Oh, know, that so is nice. Yeah. yeah. I was in Midtown, which was beautiful there. You know, yeah, Midtown was. was great. But, you it know, and nice. you know. So I think, you know, uh, again, 
uh, comfort is a really difficult thing to abandon, you know. Ooh. And I always say, well, break your comfort, break your comfort. And I say, well, it, it sounds so esoteric. What does that mean, you know? So here I am, I have the most perfect studio, 4,000 square foot studio that I had designed for me, an architect designed it for me. It I had everything I needed, everything. I used every square inch of it, you know, the storeroom, the, the, the makeup room, the, you know, anything. And I had a dark room there, you know, which sat, just sat empty for years <laughs> after that. Uh, but so time came that I had to move, you know. So because I said, they were tearing the building right, down. Right, right. After 30, and you were there was, 30 uh, yeah, years? I can't believe it. Uh, you know, so, wow. So, you know, part of me was just agonizing through. I said, what, where can I find this idealistic? Because then, then I had three real estate agents showing me buildings, you know, through warehouses. I said, well, what, what? You know, I don't want to go backwards in my career. And I'm not a snob, you know. It's just, okay, I, I've got a certain standard. I want to get at least th what I have now may be better. You know? So we started looking at warehouses, and I was like, did not appeal to me, you know, and uh, in an industrial section of town, which I don't want to be. So luckily, we lucked into this place, and I renovated it. And uh, you have to come and visit. I want yeah, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not far. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Atlanta's not far. So from abandoning here. And I got two comfort. Sisters. So you know what? And this is um, the problem with the human analytical mind. You know, we always paint a worse scenario for ourselves. You know, in, our, in lives, in our careers, and everything. So I was saying, well, I'll never be able to find something that's good. And then after a while, I just to say, okay, what if I relinquish this this nonsense that is this dialogue that is going through my head, you know? And then great things happen, you know. So the same thing that they said, you know, um, I said I never followed money, you know. Like I said, well, you know, I think you just have to believe in your inner gut feeling, and I think there's always somebody, there's a greater force of universe that takes care of you. You know, yeah. you just reminded me of, of something. I was I like to listen to podcasts. I listen to a mm. lot of podcasts mm. when I'm in the car. And yeah, so do I. I love that. Oh, you do too. Yeah. And Tech talks and uh, podcasts too. Yeah. yeah, well, you're stuck in the car anyway. You may yeah. as well get some education exactly. out of it. Exactly. But I can't remember who said it or what, but they, they said, you know, like for you, like, oh, I'm never going to have a studio this good again. That's your old story. What's your new story? Yeah. My new story is, I'm going to find the best studio. It's going to be even right. better. You know, it's like you have to just tell yourself a new story. But you know, I never even said that. You know, I, I agree. I think this is a good uh, that, uh, narrative. But I never said I'll find a better studio, and I just went along with the flow, and it happened. You know, I think that's a, I think if we just relinquish our need to analyze everything, mm. I think great things happen. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Now, you also create like fine art landscape photography mm -hmm. and thing, flowers. You've got some amazing flower yeah. photography as well. Well, that's my, you know, my, one of my love. I think anything with nature, I adore, you know, uh, w whether it's a human form or it's, it's a flower or it's a landscape. Because with all our technology, you know, we're so arrogant about our technology, a AI and VI, VR and all that. <laughs> if you try to create a flower that is alive and it, it it connects with you on a much spiritual level. I don't think there's any technology out there that can create that. Now, what do you do with your flower photography that makes it look so what? unique? I mean, well, every, I mean, the flower is a flower is a flower. Why? What? What's the difference? I think you brought a yours? really good point. I think we're, we are there's 77.5 billion people on this earth, and everybody is unique in their own ways, seeing, expressing their vision, or singing or whatever. Um, so when I was doing these flowers, I mean, I had seen a lot of paintings by George O'Keefe, these beautiful, oh, okay. uh, you know, the, the sizes. And there was something that, okay, this is theirs. What is my voice? What is my take on shooting flowers? So, and this is, again, it was just by following my, my, my gut feeling. I said, okay, what if I put a spotlight through these flowers uh, and make them glow? Oh, like a backlight. Backlight. So, ah. so it's an electronic flash. It looks like an x-ray machine, you know, that brown <laughs> color makes it. But then I found a way to photograph them without, you know, if I use hot lights, it would kill them in no time. So, okay. so you think of, you know, logical ways to do it. So I said, well, and then that was very appealing to me, and I call them luminescent flora because I'd never seen them before, you know. So that was the uniqueness that you were talking about Yeah, because so I, I, I couldn't figure out what it was. And I think, you know, Everything we do, there is a part of us that we could be unique and creative about that. You know, so you could look at a lot of other things, like, okay, this is their stuff. And that's why I never follow trends. Okay, I look at them, I admire them, and I put them aside. Okay. And then, okay, what is my story? 
you know, so. And so yeah. you look at this flower and you're like, what can I do to find my own look for right. this flower? Well, and then you not just in those words, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, again, you get in there and process? you just put any, uh, any analytical feeling aside, you know, you just get there and do it. You know. It's like, you know, I like to cook and I, I never measure anything and, it, you know, and people like what I do but amazingly. And <laughs> so you learn, you know, so you add ingredients and you taste them. It's the same thing like photographing. You add ingredients or take away ingredients. If the light is too hot, you move it back. So you find okay. a way to create that balance in there and it, that after a while it starts making sense. Just for, yeah. So you just start experimenting and then mm -hmm. kind of right. see what happens? Is yeah, that and I'm never anxious to, to see where I'm getting. You know, if I'm spending three hours on this one, so be it. I mean, who cares? I mean, what's more important, you know? Wow. Where am I going to go? You know, so that's so important. You know. What about landscapes? How do you same same landscapes, type of thing? I, Everybody you know, does landscapes. People don't see me as landscape photographer, but I love landscape because I, you know, a, anywhere I go, I'm always has my camera with me. I'm taking pictures of landscape. So what I'm doing is that, you know, this, about ten years ago, I would uh, scan like a texture that I would create with my brush strokes, oh. and I would create these painterly feelings. It wasn't a software, you know, it wasn't a plugin, you know, like uh, Nix Pro, or whatever, you know. Um, so I would create my own analog textures, and then I, in Photoshop, I would layer them, and I would use blending modes to give it a little bit of a different look, you know. So that so that was that made it unique because if you use a, a, a plugin, and I'm not knocking plugins, you know. Right. It's like, uh, if you use one that everybody uses, then people could identify it right away. So the plugin takes more attention than the photograph. So mm -hmm. that's the reason I did this textures by hand, by brush strokes, and I scanned them. It was a lot longer. It was a lot easier to do it in Photoshop, but it's not what I wanted. Okay. So taking the long route is not necessarily the wrong way. You know, it's, okay. It's the right way. Yeah. Now, do you have a favorite image right now, or does it change <laughs> all the time? It changes all the time, <laughs> you know, and I think when I work on a new image, it just, it, it's because it's fresh and exciting, you know, and uh, again, I'm looking, so okay, how can I evolve this one to the next level, you know, so, and that's when I go to the next level. So, so what's, yeah. what is it right now? I'm still working with this, uh, with this projection, because I think it's, you know, there's a long journey with this, because yeah. there's so many variables that you could do it, and and it, in addition to that, I, I can, since I work with a lot of great graphic designers, uh, I have a fairly good sense of graphic design. And okay. so I, in Photoshop, that's when I implement some of this graphic design to complement the shot, you know, with, without overpowering it. You know, yeah, so, you're so yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. That's the, the okay. newest series is amazing. Yeah. Well, people think I'm on drugs, but you know. <laughs> I never. It's a I, I, I always said <laughs> photography is my drug. I, I've never done. I, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. You know, this is this is fun. You know, it's a, it doesn't have any side effects either. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. All right. So, let, do you have any advice for somebody who wants to get into like fine art photography? Say that they are really good photographers and and they really have a look, and they have. A saleable product. That's something that if you looked at it, you go, "Oh, that's really good. Mm. You should be selling your stuff." Right. What would they do? How would they? How would they get involved? I well, mean, now you have your own gallery, yeah. and well, not just now, but you've had your own gallery for a while. Right. But how would you get started doing that? That's a good question. I think for the younger people, social media is probably the way to do it. You know, there's so many art. Uh, art venues that you can sell your art. You can start with that and then galleries notice you. Go to some of the trade shows, or the, not the trade shows, some of the galleries like Art Basel or you know or Palm Beach and go to the different shows and see what's been exhibited and talk to people. I mean, connections are always the greatest way to get into the fields. You, know, you talk to the gallery directors, okay, this is my work. Can I make an appointment with you? And I, you know, I, not to be aggressive at all. You, know, you just go and just feel the place first. You know, you, gauge the environment and then find out who is in charge of that gallery and okay, so I really have some unique work that I think you might be interested in. Can I make an appointment with you? And I think pe when people see your passion, it, they really get it and I th most of the time I think they'll see you. you know. yeah. It was um, last night, mm -hmm. I mean you just got here today, mm -hmm. but last night they had a little cocktail party for the vendors right. and um, David Akubian I was talking to him, mm -hmm. and he, who's not far from you, he's in Georgia. Oh, okay. Anyway, he uh, he has a Flickr site, 
mm -hmm. as many people do. Right. And one of the things he did was he made sure to tag all his photos carefully. Mm -hmm. And I forgot who, it's, he has a big, large corporate customer now that he's their photographer. But he had tagged like some kind of wildlife in Georgia, you know, so they were looking to decorate their big office in mm -hmm. Georgia mm -hmm. and found his pictures on Flickr, were so yeah. impressed with him, and now he's got this huge commercial client That's that he does yeah. tons of. Well, the same applies to fine art, too. I mean, if they see, you know, and I'm not, you know, I, I don't know the proper taglines and metadatas, the meta tags, rather, and, you know, but I mean, I'm learning it. And I, I'm using as a part of my business, but basically I just try to do what I love, and hopefully people see it. You know, and I you yeah. know, but yeah. we'll put it on a website, and then we do some Facebook posts and Instagram and so on. And so you sell your work through other galleries as well as your right. own, correct? Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, so you're getting discovered all the time because you've other people. You've. I think you know. I want to really get uh, global distribution of my work. You know, I think. But the fact that you know there's so many great galleries out there, and I've I've been just so complacent about uh, not approaching them because I'm not really, you know, I don't think of uh, you know, I'm terrible about money. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like I said, well, I you know I need to go with this gallery, you know, would, but I think it's I'm ready. I feel like my I've got enough body of work. And that your stuff is so unique. I've never Thank seen you. anything Thank like you. it. So it's kind. amazing. Well, you're going to give me a big ego, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that, that's, I think the advice is um, to the, the young people especially, not to get the lost in the noise. You know, I, th I know there's a lot of hashtags and all this. Pay attention to them. But what is more important than any of that is what you're trying to say in your images, in your art. Mm. And then the taglines and everything, that's, that's the, s the same thing I was talking about techniques. So those are the techniques that you implement to elevate the, the exposure to your photography. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, getting exposure is a whole, a whole different. The problem with the, the good thing about the internet is it's easy to get your stuff out there. Mm -hmm. The bad thing about the internet, it's easy for everybody to get their stuff out That's there. True. So and then you get lost in the, what you call the noise. But yeah, right? But you know, like how many speakers and uh, photographers, you know, that basically they rely on hype? They, they create this persona, it's not them at all. You know, they're on the internet, they're a whole different person. They're loud, they're arrogant sometimes because they get attention. They go to these trade shows and, you know, so people are looking for leaders, you know, and those are not the leaders I look for. I think the message is where, what, what you do with your work. The work. It's not how you talk about your work, you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Although you, sometimes it works. I well, mean, it does. I mean, I know I, I'm not denying that. I think social media works, but I'm saying you could really get lost in this noise and this following the crowd, that you really lose the purpose. You know, like the sense of fulfillment goes away because mm -hmm. you're an artist. You know, you're trying to create art. So now you embrace technology, spending two thirds of your time being on Twitter and Facebook and yep. a lot of the small talk. You know, so yeah, and then you don't yeah. enjoy your life either. No, because, because you, you really so trade your, your private moments for that. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And then you're a marketing person, not a photographer, not an artist or whatever. So. Yeah. I mean, it's true that we have to wear have so, to so many some, hats. Of course. You know, of course you know, we, uh, but you know, I think there needs to be a balance in what you do and you know, everything. So, yeah. I think that's true. Because yeah. I know for me, yeah. You know, I'm running a business, and I, I don't photograph nearly as much as I'd like to. Even though I am photographing nonstop, it's, I'm doing all the commercial kind of stuff. Yeah, and I'm not, I feel the same way. I'm not way. doing the yeah. passionate stuff that I want to be working right. on. Right. So, but, you yeah. know, in the summer. For us, I live in a seasonal area. Right. All the creative stuff only gets done the, in the summer. <laughs> those are the times that I think you need to cherish the time that you have with yourself. You know, and I, I think we have a hard time with that because... You know, again, the, the social media and the, the, the media is always putting us in competition with ourselves, with others. Because there's always somebody doing something different than you think they may be better than you. So what does it do? It's, uh, your self-worth becomes diminished. Yeah. So we're always constantly thinking of, okay, what can I do to you know, get to the next level? So you lose those great, you know, we don't, we don't go around twice in this life. You know, we, we waste so much time thinking about how 
how we're going to excel in our careers and all that, we, it becomes a major part of our lives, which is really sad. Yeah. You know, so, and I think we need to take time, you know, you know bless you, <laughs> to go you. and shoot a landscape, shoot, shoot something. I shall go for a hike, you know, or <coughs> do something to connect with nature and you realize this is what really matters. Mm. You know? God, yeah. I love being out. And I'm, yeah. I'm so lucky because I live right here in the Everglades. I know. I know. And it is That's fabulous. Lovely. When I go out there, yeah. I feel like I'm in outer space. It's a different yeah. world and it's just such a beautiful world. But yeah. I never get out there in the winter because I'm working so much yeah. in the winter because that's our busy season. That's true. Well, you know, so I'm out there uh, in a rainy season up to my waist. <laughs> I know. Some people have. You want to come out with the, me at the alligators? Or, let or me know. Some of the natural geo photographers or natural photographers, they do that. I say, God, I really respect them because they, their commitment is pretty incredible. You know? if you, I'm yeah. from Detroit. Mm -hmm. If you would have told me even 10 years ago that I would like walking in the swamp with the alligators yeah. and snakes, I would never have believed you. Right. That's right. <laughs> but once you get out there, it's, it's like you said, being out in nature, but yeah. really, when you're out, and that's really out in nature. It's a whole different yeah. world. It's very... And you're co connecting with such a much bigger force than, you know, the, the, the story that we have constantly going in our heads about and our little world. You, when you go outside and explore that outside, then you see other beings, other animals. And you look at them like they're really miracles, you know, like what they do. They're intelligent. They're, they're, they're eco-friendly unlike us. Um, so I love this quote by Einstein. He said, you could look at life and think nothing is a miracle, or you could look at life and everything is a miracle. Ah. So, I mean, when you look at this, this planet should be called the, the miracle planet because everything that happens on it, including us, so you and I are sitting here, there are a billion things happening in our bodies without even on controls. Is yeah. that a miracle or what? I mean, it's like, so I when you look so. at other <laughs> creatures, you know, the bird that they, or they see a dragonfly. I've always been fascinated with dragonflies because our most sophisticated fighter jets can't do that. They go to the water, they fly at the dizzying speed, they catch a fly, they go up. You know, like, that's a miracle. You know, like a living miracle. Like if you look at those little moments, there's nothing that's going to be substitute for that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's good. Yeah. I've been, as I got older, I, I'm learning from people like yeah. you. Uh, so like, slow down, yeah. take it easy, take some days off once in a while, well, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm guilty of that. I don't take a day off, you know, because I'm always, well, sometimes I do, but I, I don't say, okay, I'm going to take next Friday off. Because things, you know, I just go there, I enjoy, and, you know, I so enjoy for you, working. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. not like, it's not like work if you like it that much, Well, right? I've never said, that, thank God it's Friday, you know, all these yeah. years I've been in the business, you know, so. Now, yeah. do you do any commercial work at all anymore? Some. No, a very small percentage because, I mean, there are a lot of younger people working with younger art directors for a lot less money, and there's less jobs now. I think most of it has gone to, as you know, it's YouTube and so on. Okay. So uh, I think the direction has changed. So there's, there are print ads, but not many of them. I mean, corporates, you know. And there's, there's, I mean, when you look at all these colleges that are graduating thousands of students every year, so they get into workforce, and their price structure is a lot more desirable for some of these clients to save money and basically that's what dictates a lot you know it's not creativity so much in the I mean, I'm not saying it's not being done it's not as uh, it, w it wasn't as paramount you know the the, mm -hmm. the need to do quality work you know like a lot of great designers and art directors did before it's yeah. funny that I did a um, a photo shoot for a guy who was you know in advertising he's an older guy he's and it's Mid, mid 70s I think mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was a full size shot with him and his partner and I you know I do a lot of that kind of work and so he sent me back a list I never saw anything like it but he was like an art director and an advertising mm -hmm. he sent me a list of like there's a slight crease in my pants on the left hand mm -hmm. side that I want you to remove and yeah. I mean I never saw anything like it I know. but yeah. that's like you said, they were yeah. so exacting, yeah. and everything had to be so perfect, yeah. and I don't think they care anymore. I just yeah. don't think the standards are the same. You're right. And You're I right. also think, you know, when I was learning photography, fashion photographers are F11, because everything has to be sharp from head to toe. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. now, like, you can't even make out what the clothes are that's in true. the clothing magazine because, or catalog, because everything yeah. is different. So yeah. Yeah. I guess it's just a, just a, it's change this it is goes really through cycles change. you know and I think and it's good to explore this period you know you don't possibly you don't see every detail in the clothes it's you know it's the mood and ambience that 
it makes the shot intriguing, but I think this is a cycle that is going to go and you know, turn around. Come around. Yeah. Photography, one thing I've learned now, I've been in the photography business for 18 years full yeah. time, is very trendy. Oh. Holy cow. It is. It's Absolutely. trendy and trendy and trendy. It's mm. like what, you know, when I first started, if you ever had any lens flare in your picture, yeah. that meant you didn't know what you were doing. Now you do it purposely. No, <laughs> yeah, now it's like, how do you do lens flare? Yeah. Oh my God, I better yeah. learn how to do it. I was taught yeah. never to do that yeah. kind of stuff, you know? So. Well, my narrative is uh, I never follow trends and you know, I stay true to myself, you know? So trends, you know, we talked about earlier, they come and go, you know? But really, is that your voice and the trend that is now it's so popular? And I never followed anything that was popular. I went the opposite way. When the, where people went, I went the opposite way. Uh, so, and know. it seems to have worked pretty well. Well, you know what? I mean, every, every one of us have a different personality. I mean, their, their character or their, their values that we see, we don't see a value in following for the crowd. You know, okay, where is everybody going? It's like, you know. Um, but so, you know, I don't mm. think people do that consciously. Like I named my son, he mm. was born in 1986. Mm. I named him Christopher. Mm -hmm. Well, so did everybody else who had a boy named in, in 1986. <laughs> I didn't realize I was yeah. naming him the same as everybody else at the right. time. You don't even yeah. know that you're sucked into a trend, I yeah. guess, you yeah. know? So maybe you make a conscious effort. Do you see the trend and you're like, I'm doing something different. And maybe right. that's how you've found success all well, these what years. What Christopher becomes is beyond what his name is, indicates, right? The, oh, very true. Yeah. You so the name is a name, right? So I know, so but yeah. it's like... I know. <laughs> I didn't realize. My sister, yeah. you know, her first daughter is 41, mm -hmm. named Heather. Mm -hmm. Everybody else who had a girl that yeah. year named their kid Heather. They yeah. even made a movie called Heathers because right. there were so many Heathers in the world at that time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we don't realize we're doing it at the time. So yeah. I, I think with trends, it's very similar. You don't even know that you're sucked into a trend. That's true. But and I think that's a, that's a danger of, you know, like there's a lot of the messages that are false messages in social media that we get sucked through it and we don't have time to think about it because it's happening so fast, you know. So, and that I think that's true. why it's so important to just sit back and say, okay, is this what I want to be? Is this what I want to do? So your inner voice is a lot, it tells you where you need to be, not and the social media, not the crowd. This yeah. is true. And you know what else you said in this interview that mm. really kind of hit me is you said that you compare yourself to or other photographers and things like that. And I, I do that too. I didn't yeah. realize I was doing that until just now when you said that because yeah. you, the way you said it, you said uh, that, oh, they look, they're better than I am or whatever. And I, I didn't even realize, I don't think I consciously ever think that. But when I look at my work, I think, well, that's not as good as this. You know, I don't think this is that good. Which is very, well, I mean, you learn from it, I think it's good. But if you're over analytical about it, I think it has a negative value yeah. to it. And I try not to be over analytical about it. And, you know, we're humans. We're always comparing ourselves with somebody who is smarter than us or better looking than us or whatever. Uh, and you can't have it all. I mean, we have our own gifts and you just have to make the most of it. So how, yeah. let's say that... I'm a young photographer, not in age, mm -hmm. but because most of my customers are, they're my age at least, mm -hmm. you know, but they're just maybe starting in photography. Maybe they're just retiring and starting a new chapter in their lives or whatever. Mm -hmm. But just starting out in photography, how do you know if you're good enough to put your art out there for sale? I think if you do enough of it, you, you know, because, you know, remember what I was saying, like if I see an image that I've done and it doesn't, uh, meet all the protocols, I just trash it. So I think you get, you get to a point that you've seen enough images of your own and others that you can be a judge of that. Okay, well, I think, this, you know, like what I said about, I think I have a good body of work that I think I want to go and approach other galleries. You know, I think it feels right. It's just, I, I, it didn't, just I didn't really set a deadline for it or anything. It's just like it just evolved, you know. But I mean, is there, could they get advice you know, photography teachers, art galleries, would, do the, would they give them, or would, they be com would competing be a good way to know? Competing, I don't think, is a good way to know because in competitions, at least in the PPA, Professional Photographers mm -hmm. of America, if you win competitions in the PPL, pay, PPA, generally those are not works that will sell. Mm -hmm. They even have a saying, salonable right. is not saleable, right. you know? So comp competing, I guess, maybe would get your confidence up. But how do yeah. you know? Because if you want to be a fine art photographer, of course you want to follow your art, mm -hmm. but you also want to sell it. Yeah. 
you don't want to just create art just for yourself. Right. Or right, if you sure. do, then Absolutely. the question is... Absolutely, we all have to make a living, yeah. sure. So, so how do you get to that point? Because if you're not that educated photographically or artistly, artistly, that's not a word. Artistically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, artistically. I think the best thing to do is, again, you know, we look at cross-reference. You look at some of the people who are successful. Okay. And I say, well, you, you know, you go beyond, okay, look at that. They're very famous. They're making X amount of dollars. You don't want to go there. You want to look at what the, the, the message is, what their voice is, what they're trying to say, and why is it resonating with people. So it, it's not a fad. It's not, it, it has a much deeper meaning to it. So you listen to that meeting, or you, you analyze that one, and then you see if you can find it in your own work. Mm, and I think you can, find, you can find strength in that. Okay. Yeah. So analyze somebody, mm. and you said that already, but I didn't, yeah, I think, it didn't you know, like sink I, in. I'm always looking at photographers, work, painters, sculptors, you know. What's uh, good about from that? Different Why is that appealing? Yeah, what I other questions would you ask what, yourself while you're looking at this guy's portfolio? What are the questions you'd be asking yourself? Right. So what? Well, the question is, like, so let, let me use an example. So you're going through pages of this magazine. All of a sudden, there's one page that just attracts you. It, you stop. Or listening, you're listening to music and your mind is going 90 miles an hour, and there's one music that you just have to stop and listen to it. So what is that message? Mm. What, why is that message is so special that stopped you? Whether it's a visual one or it's an audible one or anything. Okay. So I think those are the messages. They're, they're subliminal, but if you pay attention to them, then they bring a lot of value that's, in your that's life. That's really good yeah. stuff, yeah. 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 That is good. Yeah. I know. So I think that that's my take. You know, so I, you know, I'm sure there's many better, different ways to do of it, too. Of course, there are, yeah. and everybody yeah. has a different, like I told the David Akubian story. I never heard that, a story like that right. ever before. Right. It's just, yeah. that's a new story that I'm putting right into my, I've already told that story in the class yeah. I taught today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just learned it yesterday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it was that's a good, good story. I mean, that's a fascinating thing yeah. that happened to him. Yeah. But, you know, I've been doing this show now for a year and a half or so, and uh, it's a weekly show. That's a lot of shows. Go ahead. So I'm always looking for guests and things like that, and I have found several guests just from Instagram. Right. And then one guy, Rob Hoovis, was a guest that I found through Instagram, and he just gave a little Instagram story. So mm -hmm. David Kubian Flickr, Rob yeah. Hoovis Instagram, you know, there's yeah. different... Everybody has a different route yeah. to their success different as an story. artist, I guess. Another, one of my fellow explorers is Gregory Heisler. Uh -huh. He should have been born, I mean, he's a born comedian. He is so funny. He, you know, he, I sometimes sat, sat through, at, when I was giving talks at Jacob Javit, I would sit through his lecture because mine was after his. And it would just crack me up. I said, God, how could I follow this guy? He's the funniest <laughs> comedian. He's a fabulous photographer. You know, he shows a lot of important people. But it's just a beautiful human being. I think, you know, when you look at all the qualities of what one person encompasses, and, okay, and then you think of, so these are all working together. And I think there's a lot to be learned from that, you know. So I think there's a lot of role models that a lot of people who are doing altruistic things in, in the world, you know, because we're so self-focused now. I mean, I look at a lot of the people, I read books like that, you know, that people are doing things for other people. And look at the kind of value it brings to your life. You know, I, it's true that we have to make uh, make a living, but I think we could dedicate part of our time to do that. You know, to help others because you know there are other people who could use our help. They have uh, a new TV show from Mike Rowe. Do you know who he is? No, he was the Dirty Jobs guy. Oh, oh God, I love him. I yeah. love him too, and he yeah. has a new show. I think it's. Oh, gosh, I forgot the name of it, but yeah. it's basically highlighting oh. altruistic people. Yeah. It's a really inspiring show. Well, what I love about when uh, he was talking about on TED Talks about the dirty jobs, you know, he said he would go and meet these people working in the sewers, you know, he would go on there and the smelly the rats running around us. And he said, uh, if I asked him a question, I said, did you follow your passion? He said, he would throw me out. He would, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, he said, you know, don't listen to you follow your passion. He said, just follow what's right for you, you know, and take your passion with you. And he said, these guys, they love what they do. They when this guy was uh, making baits, worms, you know, and they were biting, you know, so they, but he was making millions of dollars a year. 
and he loved doing it. And he had like two vacation homes in you know Colorado or you know other mm. places. But that's not that created the value for him. He said they really love what they do. You know, so as a trivial. No, so when you look at you know when I. Let me go back to me. Uh -huh. So if I went and told my parents, I said, okay, I want to be an artist, you know. Uh. Uh, they would say, what? what, not a lawyer, doctor? So this is how we have become so insensitized to other professions, you know, like, okay, a plumber, let's say if he, he brings a guy, he sees the leak, but they don't know the source of the leak. He has to go under the sink, reach over, and find the leak, and he has a solution in his mind right there how to fix it. That's intelligent. Not being a, you know, a computer scientist, sure, they are smart, but there's so many other ways. A waitress who's waiting on tables. Okay, they've got to coordinate and you know, synchronize everybody's, we got to, got to get the sandwich to this person, coffee with that. So you're managing your time different ways. So there, there's certain different skills. But the people are getting a, a lot of attention on our media is uh, the, you know, lawyers, doctors, computer scientists, you know. Uh, I'm not you know, trivializing what they do, but there's so many other people who do trivial jobs that without them, we could not live our lives. That's for sure. Yeah. And I love that show because, yeah, I never watched any of the episodes that I saw his TED Talks. I was, in, <laughs> I was laughing so hard with what he was talking He's about. He's amazing. You, know? the you message gotta follow was so him great. on Facebook, even though I know you're not yeah. so big on the social media. No, no, I'll go. I mean, I do Facebook. You He's, know, so, he's yeah. yeah, he's really good. Oh, oh. But. You know, I think one of the things that what you're talking about, about these different jobs, and I think is that as it pertains to us as photographers, at least this is true of me, mm -hmm. I am not a technical person, so learning photography was really hard for me. And well, especially I, the digital ones, yeah. yeah. Well, I started yeah. in film. Right. I'm old. Right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but I, I worked, I didn't, I didn't have the same story. Everybody, oh, I, I always loved, uh, not me. I just yeah. needed a job. I got a part-time job right. working for a photographer. Right. That's how I got into photography. And so I, it was fun. We were doing weddings, and it was really fun. I love yeah. being at weddings. That's, so That's the key, right? Yeah. Fun. yeah. And so I wanted to learn, and I, I, I used to cry. I thought it was too hard for me because mm -hmm. I just couldn't seem to learn it. I took classes, and I took classes, and I took classes, and I took classes, and I worked full-time for a photographer who, it's like, I don't get what the aperture does. It's the hole. You say it louder. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just not learning. And so finally, when I started getting it, I became more confident. And then I enjoyed it a million times more. And I think mm. that's true, like with the waitress. She knows she's a good waitress. She's going to make more money. Mm. When you're good at something, mm. you like it better. Mm. And then I think mm. that's when that's true. you're true passion and your true creativity can come out. Yeah, but you just first, answered what you said to your point. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. first you have to learn what you're doing. Right, exactly. <laughs> to your point. I mean, you know, you learn it and then how do you know when you're ready? And that's exactly what you did with your photography. Yeah, I didn't even you think know, about you that. You learned and right. learned on it and then you got to a point and said, okay, I have the confidence, I can do it. Yeah. And that is so true. Yeah. I think self confidence is everything, you know. And as long as yeah. it's real self-confidence, because I yeah. have a lot of students who come through my training center who think they are the greatest photographers in the world, That's so and I look at their stuff and I think they're just terrible. They don't have any basics. They don't understand yeah. composition. Oh, and they, but I don't want to learn because I don't want to break. I want to break the rules. Mm, you got to really kind of learn what they are first before right. you can break them. That's exactly. Opinion, exactly. Anyway. I agree. I agree so. with you 100. percent I'm one of the rule breakers, but I guess I, I learned the right the rules first, and then some of them that you know elevated the, my photography, I broke them. So yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. But you know so. what you you knew enough to know that you were breaking a rule, and you knew the reason you were breaking right. it. Right. Well, one, one of prime example, like Michael Kenner, you know, the landscape photographer, uh -huh. is a British photographer, is fabulous, and you know, he did years ago. You shot film, so when you you would not dare expose your film more than a ten seconds because it would get this reciprocity effect, and all these weird artifacts would happen. And he said, "Okay, I'm going to expose my film for three, four hours." And he did these landscapes, like let's say an ocean with the tumultuous waves, when it becomes serene, misty, and everybody's copying him now. So he, he redefined landscape photography through breaking rules. You know, Ansel Adams, after Ansel Adams, it was Michael Kenna, that he created a whole new followers of landscape and a, a new um, definition of landscape photography. It's all serene and beautiful, the lighting, it's all this long, because he dared to, uh, to, to break the rules, you know. And 
This photographer is exquisite. You know. I'll have to go check him out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really, really. K-E-N-N-A. -K He's a really fab, fabulous photographer. And, you know, I, again, you were talking about, uh, you know, I spent, I don't know how many years of my life I spent in a dark room printing for clients and myself because I was obsessed about learning how to become a good printer. And, you know, what I would go maybe do 30 or 40 prints f for myself before, and throw them out and, you know, return them. Well, obviously one or two that I liked, you know. And it's not being overly obsessive about things. You just know when it's there. Especially, you know, there's so many processes. You, you process, you develop the, the paper, and then you let it dry and then tone it, and toner changes all the qualities of it. So there's several steps that determines what the outcome looks like. So, and that brought a discipline to me. So, you know, so, and then Canon saw what I could do with my black and white printings that made me a Canon print master. Ah. So, which was good. Yeah, never, I, so again, remember, I never went specifically planned anything, okay, I'm going to do this because it's, you know, it's going to evolve into this. Because I, I didn't have the vision that far in advance to see, to translate it into digital printing, which we talked, we met with their, uh, with their engineers from Japan and let them develop their wide format printers. And ah. that was the catalyst from my knowledge from the dark room, which I, at the time I just took it as a journey and enjoyed it and learned. And then somehow it became that you is, know, useful. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you really tried to do a good job and that led to other things. Yeah. Just trying to do well, the know, best possible job on absolutely. everything that, you've done, on you do, that you do. Yeah. So what's yeah. next for Parrish Kohanim? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I think wherever it, take, it takes me, you know, I, the universe takes me. I just, uh, a lot more new images, unique, different. Uh, that's, that's what I'm thinking. And I don't know what they are yet. All about the images. They, they, image and, and life quality, I okay. think, too. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, these lectures and workshops and my gallery has presented to me, I've met so many incredible people. Mm. And besides all the blessings that we have, I'm so grateful for being able to meet all these great people you know, of all different walks. And that, that really elevated the quality of my life. That's awesome. And you know, what, what could you ask for more? You know, it's like, you know, if you meet these people through your career, God, this is icing on a cake. You know, yeah. so, so. Now, what's your website? My website is www.parishkohanim.com. Parishkohanim.com. Parish with one R, K-O-H-A-N-I-M. And we are actually redesigning a new website. Ah. So with some of the more of this reflection series that you like and a lot more well. images. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, within the next month or so, we'll have some. You know. A lot of behind the scenes because I think this is interesting. You know, I like, think uh, it's very interesting yeah. to people. I love that stuff. You Ooh. know, and I, I've always been fascinated from day one when I was a photographer. It's like, God, you know, I wonder what kind of lights he uses. What, you know, we have this kind of enigma in our minds. And I say, well, you know. Uh, and everybody sees light differently, you know, because of our, our, our life experiences. Uh, but you just think, you know, fascinating how things, but you know, now every YouTube is like, oh, they use a softbox, a background light, a hair light. But not that, you know, like you look at some really well-known photographers or painters, you know, how do they do this painting? Jeez, you know, they have something going on. And I think the process is fascinating, you know. It's like I, I'm fascinated with Jackson Pollock. A lot of people think, oh, like he was like, kind of really kook, you know, because he sat in front of the canvas for like six or eight hours at a blank canvas, and all of a sudden he exploded in the energy and just was throw, splash, splash paints on a canvas. And when you look at it in a printed book, you say, yeah, whatever. When you see these paintings like 10 feet wide by 10 feet, uh -huh. they have so much energy in it. And this is where he was gathering all his energy to just collect it and express it in his art. You know, so, so, I mean, you know, I, I like to watch people like that because they, everybody so, has a different narrative. So you know? will you have video is that, or just pictures? Or? I, I think they're just behind the scenes. You okay. know, and I, I'm always fascinated to see how, how do the people do these things? I, you well, know? I like, told you, I, couldn't, I looked at some yeah. of your stuff and I'm like, how did, I can't even figure it out. Uh, Usually yeah. I can figure it out. You I know? think it's the mystery of it. And I, more fascinating that we are all from the human race, but we're also different. You know, they're, they're, uh, and again, it's through our life experience, our societies that we were born in and raised, we express ourselves differently. And then you, you always have curiosity about, oh, wow, what is he thinking? What is he doing? You know, that, there are a lot of people that I look up to like that. Yeah. We should put that on our website, Joe, the yeah. behind the scenes. I'm yeah. copying that idea. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I mean, especially ah. with this Cirque project, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer, you know, because, again, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, he did it in Photoshop. And I'll talk about it, you know, and then yeah. shortly. Yeah. And, and, well, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. being on it's the my show. Pleasure. I thank appreciate you. it. It's parishcohannum.com. And we will have um, Parish's website and some sample images in the show notes on understandphotography.com. But then we're also going to link back to Parish's website. So you can look at it now. It's pretty right now. But yeah. then... Stay tuned for the new website with the behind-the-scenes stuff, which is going to be really cool, too, well, right? I wish I was a, on, good on camera, as you are, because I am so... When the camera points at me, I'm not so good. Because ah. you know, so. <laughs> I'm always behind it, you know. Get about 80 shows under your belt, and you'll be good at yeah. talking to the camera. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> Poor Joe Fitzpatrick was here with me when I tried to do my first video class. Did you? And yeah. it took... I'm going to say eight, ten hours to get about a minute of video yeah. because I was so bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, yeah. thank you for watching the Understand Photography show. Remember to watch us next week. At four, if you want to watch us live, watch us at 4 p.m. Eastern time on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash understandphotography. Or watch us on YouTube or listen to us uh, as a podcast on iTunes. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show with my special guest, Parrish Gohannam. Who we'll doesn't see... understand photography. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Just see you kidding. next week. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah.